Ah, welcome back. Uh, this is a soccer football whisperer project YouTube channel again. And uh, as you know, I'm Eric Williams, and I'm going to be sharing with you um, portions of the book, The 100 Principles for Soccer Football Whisperer Club Development, Leadership, Coaching, and Quality Control. It's 464 pages of material and of seminal work that is not going to be in one place um, as much as you want to search. So um, I invite you now to go through the chapters. We are going to do 10 of them. There are 10 chapters. And I'll take a few minutes, maybe five to six minutes, to introduce you to each chapter and um, explain a, briefly what the principles are about under that particular chapter. So chapter one is the introduction to soccer football club formation, development, accountability, planning, leadership, and performance management. And the principles are going to be covering definition, formation, rapid development, affects of the club, mission, expectations, quality and quality control. Also leadership challenges and organizing the strategic planning and the development of a club image. Um, we are covering that area for the club leadership itself to start in turn doing some internal, in, internal review of what they are doing, looking at their own policies and seeing what they are, what they are about and seeing how, how tidy the, the leadership is in terms of covering all the bases. Um, principle one is definition, formation and affects of the club. It deals with mantra, starting, mission, leadership, style, image, goals, affiliation, and launch. It is good to have a launch. You're in, if you're in a new, you're a new situation, you're forming a new club, you have to let the community know about it, try to encourage, get some members to get involved, and to make sure you get off on a, on a good footing at the beginning. Principle two, new club initiators establishing corporate legal status for leadership, integrity, and control. Um, many clubs um, takes them um, quite a while to begin to formulate a corporate body, and, and, and as a consequence, they are unable to get the kind of funding and uh, get the support and the respect that they would um, otherwise get if they had formalized their, their, their system. And we do have a methodology that we, the, the clubs can utilize in forming a legal body. And that is something that um, a lot of clubs, new clubs, will want to pay attention to. Uh, principle three, um, sound financial policy and accounting. And that's a statement of good club health and governance. And we're going to have a, a rousing discussion prompter in that area. Uh, principle four, conceptualizing hidden leadership challenges and training for preparation to inspire the high-performing club. And we have a, actually some lyrics that is put into the book because this is, this is not one of your um, regular knock your head against the wall book. It's, there's going to be some fun. Um, it says, um, sipping from the whisperer's bitter cup of underperformance. And it is a lyrical presentation of what the players would be asking the, the, the coaches and the leaders of the club. Something to see. And um, I, I bet you're going to be talking about that some more. Uh, principle five, as FIFA admonished us to do, taking care of the ball, visualizing perfection in high performance play, and previewing the Whisperer Club Development programming. If we conceive it, believe it, insist on it, and participate in it, success will be ours. And this is really a motivational um, piece for the leadership of the club. We really have to get them um, riled up and, um, and ready to, to, to go because this is something that they possibly uh, have not felt um, compelled or introduced to 
um, in, in order to get the, the clubs moving and to get a good handle handle on the on what they are supposed to be to be doing. Principle six: charting the organization, leadership diagnostic review, and club performance information gap analysis for capacity building and strategic planning. That's a mouthful, but it is very important. The, 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 we must know some things. We must have the planning in place and we must be able to source information and to get people in who are going to be helping us at our clubs with strategic planning and also looking at information deficit. What is it that we are overlooking that is so important to success in this beautiful game? Uh, principle seven, foundation for constructivist leadership, public participation and stakeholder rapport, developing mutually beneficial strategic alliances. It's very important. And this is, this is what it's all about for leading the club. You are going to engage with, 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 with the private sector. You're going to engage with, with, with societal leaders and you are going to be engaging with, with families, with parents. You just have to be prepared to, to play a role and to expand the club in all reaches in order to develop a high performing club and to be able to sustain it. We will talk more about that um, later. Principle eight, strategic development planning retreat to review issues and developing policies for strengthening performance and good governance. A status analysis and forward planning meeting must be held and we say professionals should be brought in to, to facilitate this meeting and to make sure that the club is not starting to, to run and, and leaving the bag of goods way behind. So we have to be able to, um, to make sure that the, the leaders are getting all of this. Uh, principle nine, club business and social development responsibility. A realistic conversation is necessary. Uh, the clubs don't just exist in the community. There are things that the clubs, um, while, while it is, they are not being forced, it is good, good leadership and it is wisdom, good wisdom to, to participate in, in community activities and to actually lead because that is really a part of the community and there should not be any neglect in the opportunity to lead and have good influence in, in other areas than football. Uh, principle 10, review of club policy effectiveness for diagnose, uh, diagnosis and remediation to improve club health. And that's for attaining high performance. And this certainly, the club policies, they need to be policy reviews. We have to see how the policies are affecting um, the, the performance, the management, and the playing, and the relationships within the club. Principle 11, overcoming inhibitors to development of successful leadership of high performance top flight clubs. This is very important. The club's um, leadership have a lot of challenges that sometimes they are not aware of. And um, the, 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 the club's um, putting a lot of effort in, leaders are trying. And there's always going to be people who are underutilized that will attempt to undermine the club because these are usually bright people, energetic people. They love the club. They want to see things go forward, but they're not getting a chance to, to give up themselves. And we have tools and we have systems to allow them to participate um, in a very good way. Um, they delivering questionnaires, reviewing questionnaires, getting involved with, with, with um, getting information to the coaches, doing all kinds of other things that normally they would just be there shouting from the sideline and not really contributing to the clubs. We have, we have avenues um, through which the participation and the support can flow. And so that is it for the chapter one. Next time I will review chapter two and um, we will see how, how that goes. I thank you for listening as we move forward. Mm -hmm.